Hi, this is question number six from the AQA Further Pure 4 June 2009 exam paper. Um, in this question, we're given a transformation that's defined by this here, where the matrix M is this over here. Okay, um, part A wants us to evaluate the determinant of M and state the significance of this answer in relation to our transformation T. So, we first of all um, will want to find the determinant of M. So, part A, I'm going to start by four, negative one, three, and that's going to be negative three, take away negative four, which is plus four, which gives me a determinant of one. Now, under this transformation, the significance of this answer is that well this is the area scale factor so what this is telling us because it's got an area scale factor of one that means that the area of our new shape is is going to stay the same so we can say that the area is invariant or we could say that the area stays the same okay um part b we're being asked to find the single eigenvalue of m and a corresponding eigenvector and we want to describe the geometrical significance of these answers in relation to t so now um, just to remind you that an eigenvector tells us the direction of, of an invariant line or a line of invariant points and the eigenvalue tells us the factor um, that, that is being stretched by okay so um, I'm going to start off by saying well um, we are looking for so negative 1 take away lambda 4 negative 1 3 take away lambda I times that by x, y I want that to be equal to 0, 0 Okay, I'm just going to state that for the time being. Um, if you want to know where that comes from, you'll have to go back and have a look at another tutorial. Um, so this part here, um, I want the determinant of this to be equal to zero because I want there to, um, I, would, I don't want an inverse to exist for this. So um, that that will get me my eigenvalue. So this is what we call our characteristic equation. Um, And I want the determinant of that to be equal to zero. And um, if I write down my characteristic equation, that's going to be negative three. Take away two and. Uh, And if I uh, okay, so um, that tells me, and that's going to be lambda take away one um, times lambda take away one, or lambda take away one squared is going to be equal to zero. Um, so lambda, or my eigenvalue, is going to have to be equal to 1 and I've only got a single eigenvalue right so um, we found the single eigenvalue of M um, and now what we're looking for is a corresponding eigenvector so um, I'm going to use this here to find my corresponding eigenvector so I'm going to substitute that into there so I'm going to just split the screen Okay, so um, when lambda is equal to 1, um, that's going to make that negative 2, 4, 
negative 1 and lambda equals 1 so that's going to be 2 x y 0 0 so what we're saying is that negative 2 x plus 4 y is going to be equal to 0 and negative x plus 2 y is equal to 0 and that's a multiple of that which is what we expected and um, I want to choose a value of x and y that's going to make this true and that will be my eigenvector remember there's not a unique eigenvector it's a family of vectors so I think if x is 2 and y is 1 that's going to work so um, my eigenvector is going to be 2 1 and I'm just going to stick a parameter in front of it to show that it's any value of um, so any multiple sorry of, of 2 1 that's going to work right so my eigenvalue is 1 and my corresponding eigenvector is going to be 2 1 <coughs> and um, we want to say what the um, geometrical significance of these answers in relation to t are well because our eigenvalue is 1 that means that each point along that line is going to map onto itself so that makes it an invariant line of points um, in the direction of 2, 1 so um, I'm just going to write that it's an invariant line of points each point will map back onto itself ok um, part C so part C is saying that show that the image of y is equal to a half x plus k under t is going to be this here. I'm just going to tidy up um, my work so far. Okay, so I'm going to um, start part C over here. Right, so um, we've got this line here that we are now going to transform by this matrix here so um, if I start I'm going to pre-multiply this line so I've got negative 1, negative 1, 4, 3 and we know that our y coordinate is going to be half of our x coordinate plus k so I'm going to call this my x coordinate and instead of putting y here I'm going to stick this in here because I know the relationship between the x and the y and it's going to be a half of this plus k Oops. Half of x plus k ok um, and I'm going to carry out that transformation and what we're looking for is we're looking for um, so this is going to tell us our our image of x, y is going to be equal to this here and what we're looking for is we're looking for um, our solution to be in this form here where our um, y coordinate is going to be half of our x coordinate plus k so if I multiply that out I've got negative 1 times x which is negative x plus 4 times a half of x plus k so 4 times half of x is going to be 2x 4 times k is 4k so that's going to be the top component and our bottom component we've got a negative x again and then this time I'm adding 3 lots of this so I'm going to have plus 3 lots of a half so 3 over 2x plus 3k so that's going to be equal to and if I simplify this I've got x plus 4k and I've got a half of x plus 3k ok um, and if we now have a look at this our um, 
y coordinate, our new our image of our y coordinate is going to be a half of my x coordinate. So that becomes half of x and that becomes 2k plus k and that makes that the 3k. Okay, so we can see that we've shown that the image of this line is going to actually be this. Okay, so I just need to write this down now. So I'm going to say that, um, so I'm going to replace my y with this here. So I'm going to say that a half of x plus 3k um, is going to be equal to a half of x plus 4k plus k and that's always true um, so we can say um, therefore is an image okay um, so moving on to part D I'm just going to tidy up my work again okay we're given that T is a shear um, we need to give a full geometrical description of this transformation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use everything that we found out so far to be able to um, decide what the geometrical description of the transformation is going to be. Now because we know that our um, invariant line is going to be y is equal to a half of x, so we, we found it there as well, um, but over here we've found that that's going to be our invariant line the y coordinate is half of the x coordinate um, so I can say that um, I'm going to have a um, share that's going to be parallel to the line y is equal to a half of x. Okay, um, so that's the first part, um, but we also need to give an example of a mapping. So I'm going to use um, 1, 0, and I'm going to say that I'm going to say that 1, 0 maps to, and if I um, multiply 1, 0 by this here, I'm going to get negative 1 at the top, that's 1, negative 1 times 1 and 4 times 0 gives us negative 1 and at the bottom I'm going to get um, negative 1 times by 1 and 3 times 0 so I'm going to get negative 1 again so that says that 1, 0 maps to negative 1 and that now is a full description of that transformation. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'll see you for the next question.